atheist adoptive couple in Alabama face discrimination from non for non-belief. Uh, Alana, no, Alana, Alana Browning and her husband, an atheist couple, were refused by a private adoption agency in Alabama simply due to their lack of religion. A digital investigative reporter, Lee, Lee Hedgepenth at a CBS, reported that the Brownings have always been transparent with their lack of religion. The agency is run by Richard and Susan Wyatt. Once the couple disclosed during the interview by the agency that they were not religious, Susan Wyatt responded, I'm sorry, we cannot work with you. She explained, quote, we are not specific about one's faith, but the biological families we work with at work with a request that our adoptive families have a spiritual life, adding, quote, most of our mothers come to us asking that the adoptive families have a belief system. All of this is completely legal as the Alabama Child Placing Agency Inclusion Act prohibits the state from discriminating against private child placing services who decline service to anyone on the grounds of conflicting religious beliefs. Wait, so where is this? This it, Good old this, it, Alabama. Is this, is this not illegal? Isn't this discrimination? No, it's not because the state specifically has an act that was recently passed that says that this is basically the state cannot interfere or um this is one of those ways in which evangelicals twist religious freedom to be if you're calling us out on discrimination that is just on the basis of our religion beliefs that is discrimination so the alabama child placing services inclusion act basically was created so that adoption agencies can legally discriminate against couples who are same sex, same sex gay couples. Um, because they say, oh, well, you know, working with them, working with gay couples is against our religious beliefs. And if you are saying that we have to work with gay couples because it's discrimination if we do not work with them, then you're actually discriminating against us. And you're violating our religious beliefs. So it's a weaponized religious freedom. And this has, because of the language of the law, this is completely legal. Because this agency is saying, we only work, we the, the mothers request that they are placed with religious families. And um, you are not a religious family. And we have the right to decline service to you on the basis of religious beliefs our our religious beliefs okay okay so let me just do a steel man okay to to defend them okay if the mother had requested that the baby goes to an atheist family would they would they have granted that wish here's where things get ridiculous okay absolutely ridiculous um Oh, you got cut. The, you got cut. You're getting cut. Say that again. Oh, oh, Susie's frozen. It's getting it's getting juicy, and Susie got frozen right when it got juicy. It got ridiculous. Susie got hung completely. Exact oh, quote. Oh, we have her back. Robot, robot Susie. Susie turned into his. Oh, there we go. We're coming back. Can you no, you're robot T. Okay. All right. So basically. The can you hear me? Still Roberty. Almost there. Now say something. Hello. He yes, you're back. Go on. Okay. So basically the reporter explicitly asked them if the mother, the giving up her child, said I specifically do not want my family to be, I want my child to be in a non-religious family. Would you work with this mother, with this child? Would you place them in a non-religious family? The person who ran this adoption agency said, I don't know. I would have to think about that and talk about that with my husband. Wait, say that again? I don't understand. I was, I was, so you I asked, you were saying, oh, okay, I'm going to steel man this. If a mother said, I want my child to be in a non-religious family, would they do that? When this woman who runs this child agent, adoption agency was asked that, 
she oh. said I, if, you know, if, if there was a non, if there was a mother who said, I want my child in a non-religious family, would you work with them? Would you place this child in a non-religious okay. home? He said, she said, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I'll have to talk about that with my husband. Okay. That's okay. That's yeah. Hypocrisy. So the ask, okay. So I asked a question that they asked uh, at her as well. That's interesting. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, that's a good, rep that's a good question thing that they ask so yeah the the hypocrisy has been exposed this is not about so that means that it's not about granting the wishes of the parents that means that you are in, inserting your own bias there exactly okay. Exactly. And okay. so, she, so the woman who runs this agency said, in the case that we found in 36 years, most of our mothers come to us asking that the adoption family, adoptive families have a belief system. We've placed children with Jewish families. We did have an Indian family at one point. I don't think we've ever had a Muslim family. Wyatt said that she didn't call, recall a single case in her nearly 40 years of experience where a mother did not express a preference for a family that believed in some higher power in 40 years she's saying there has never once been a case where a birth mother did not express a preference i don't believe that that's yeah that's nonsense i think like yeah that's completely nonsense i think maybe maybe it would be true if they push it to push it upon them you know what i mean yeah. like it's not that they're maybe it's not that they're willing the mothers are like coming and saying like yes i want to make sure that the family is Christian and, you know, God fearing wholesome family or something like that. Maybe it's like them starting, maybe it's the adoption agency that is starting the question. You know what I mean? Maybe they are like encouraging the mother to comment on that by saying like, would you like your child to be with a beautiful Christian, God loving, um, you know, husband and wife, or would you like heathens to potentially eat your baby? You know, <laughs> so, 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 and sacrifice it to the dark lord and drink mm -hmm. its blood. Would you? Mm -hmm. Which one would you prefer? Mm -hmm. um, I I think like they're leading the parents to maybe saying, I mean, potentially, right? Um, yeah. So there's or, there's uh, a few Daniel, more. Daniel things. saying she's just lying. Daniel is saying maybe she's just lying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how could you verify this? Maybe she. <laughs> I mean, you have to keep a lot of records when you're adopting children. Like a yeah, lot but of can records. you? Okay, sure. Um, so basically, when in 2017, when this law was passed, Governor Kay Ivey signed a law allowing private adoption agency to turn away adoptive parents for religious reasons, including opposition to same-sex marriage. Susan Wyatt said that she believes Alabama Family Adoptive Services is the only private adoption agency that facilitates adoptions to same-sex couples. Um, Although she believes that other agencies should not face repercussions if they do not choose to work with same-sex couples. Saying, we are a private company. We are not dictated, particularly by the law. When asked whether an adoption agency should be able to refuse services to an interracial couple without legal consequences, Wyatt says she wasn't sure about how to answer. I mean, that's pretty, I think, yeah. I mean, I think that would be smart not to answer that question. Uh, but here, read this question. This, read I mean, this what comment. do you mean? That seems like absurd just to be like, I don't know how to answer if it's okay to racially discriminate, if there shouldn't be legal consequences. For no, because, no, no, because, because, if you, because if you know, because if you say you do, that could be used against you. Because then they're like, oh, she knowingly violated the law. So maybe like it's a good idea not to comment on that without talking to your lawyer. Yeah, but the lack of comment makes you look freaking bad. <laughs> Are you kidding me? True, true. No, so but you're saying the there's a chance? <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, true. Um, okay, read this comment on Facebook. Oh, Bathin Bathinamus is saying maybe there is a box on the application form which forces the mother to choose a religion, but no option for non-religion. That's a possibility. Nothing in this report gets into their actual process processes and what's so sad is that this adoptive couple specifically chose this one adoption agency because they are the only ones that work with same-sex couples and so they thought that they would have an easier time because because of their willingness to work with gay couples they're more seemingly more liberal than everyone else 
even they got rejected. The person who runs this adoption agency said, I don't think there's going to be any other adoption agency in the state that will work with you. You're going to have to find an interstate facilitator of adoption. I can, she explicitly told them, I don't, I cannot think of a, a, a single facility or agency that will work with you. And now this couple is saying, we're just going to give up. Like they're seriously considering just not adopting because everyone's shut them out. So Wait, now, so you're saying they accept gay couples, but not atheists? Yeah. Okay, so that means we win. Suck it, LGBT people. We win the <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> we win the oppression Olympics. Atheists are officially more oppressed than oh LGBT community in Alabama. Okay. Oh LGBT God. accepted in Alabama, but not atheists. We win the oppression Olympics. Okay. <laughs> I knew it. I always knew it. We are the most oppressed. We know we win we win the victimhood narrative. Okay, so we're at the bottom of the list. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was so sad. Like, there's this couple that wants to open their home to a child. This this is something that a lot of people are not willing to do. And they're being shut out, not, not on their willingness to provide a home for people. They've been foster parents for years. So taking care of children on behalf of the state for years and it's not about their ability to provide a good home, their ability to pay or provide. It's simply because they're not believers. And I should be clear that it's not that the, it's not necessarily that the agency is discriminating against them because they're atheists. It's that we have to place them with what the mothers prefer. And the mothers have always said that, apparently always have said that they have a religious preference. So that's kind of like the, wiggle wiggle around um and it's th there was this one comment by the lady that runs the adoption agency that made me like kind of mad she said quote well i am the mother of two adopted children and i believe these children are gifts from god i wouldn't be a mother or a grandmother if it wasn't for two women who carried our children to term and gave them to us as a gift we're not in charge of where these babies go. God is. And it's the mother's choice. And 99% of those families talk about faith. So it just seems to me, it's like, well, I consider my children gifts from God. And because you don't believe in God, like you shouldn't have these kids. I don't, I, something about that obviously, comment really bothered obviously. me. No, no, because it's just, it, yeah, I know what it, bothers, uh, what, what it bothers you because they just speak about their religious values because as if it's so apparently true like well i mean you know obviously kids are just gifts from god so why would these heathens be given adopted children like what like of course <laughs> like the way that sometimes christians speak about their beliefs as if like they're so obviously wholesome and good and anything against it must be evil and dark you know the, the, the way that they congratulate themselves and see themselves and as better and more moral and everybody else beneath them and talk about it as if this is an accepted reality. And, you know, it just makes the otherization of non-Christians. So it, it just makes it so cringe and disgusting, you know, and, and the, the fact that they speak about it in a way that makes it sound like they're good people while they're talking about it. Um, even though their speech is spe specifically about making acting like other people are less less than right, but they're speaking as if they are being moral people saying that. It's just that 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 put next to each other just makes it even more disgusting. You know what I mean? I don't know how else. What do you think about that. birth mothers having a say in the religious background of the families that their children are going to? I think it's I, part of me feels like it's absurd. It's like you're giving away this kid like. I mean, it, it should only be allowed. It should be only allowed if everything else is allowed. Like you should be able to say, like, I want my, uh, I want the family to be blonde. Um, I want the family to have uh, only one car, not no cars, not two cars, but one car. Like if, because it's, it's, it's as meaningful as anything else. You know what I mean? Like if you want to allow that, then you should be allowing everything, um, because it doesn't make any sense. To just be because that would be religious if if you're only doing if religion is a thing and other criteria are not then this is religious privilege 
Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our Blasphemy that we continue to send you more Blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.